Well, hello, everyone. I'm uh, Dr. Rory Cooper. Uh, I'm a professor at the uh, University of Pittsburgh and also the director of the Human Engineering Research Laboratories, a joint effort of the University of Pittsburgh and the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. And I'm a, it's a pleasure to speak to you about some of the medical considerations for the para-athlete. And uh, if you get the chance to uh, come to Pittsburgh sometimes, you're welcome to visit us at we're located in, in Bakery Square uh, in beautiful Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, but first, I'd like to share with you a little bit about the uh, Paralympic principles. The you know, Paralympic motto is uh, spirit in motion. And what I find uh, very interesting is that the uh, Paralympics are really based on three principles, transcendence, equality, and integration. So you think of Paralympics as, as sport, which it is sport at the highest level, but it's also uh, an essentially contributed to the disability rights movement. Um, one fun thing, if uh, you look at the picture on the bottom of my slide, that's uh, Sir Philip Craven and myself. Uh, Phil Craven was uh, the uh, president of the International Paralympic Committee for a number of years, and he and I were uh, contemporaries as athletes. And so um, it's fun to see uh, Phil succeed in his, in his own right. Uh, and I, I included two other pictures on the bottom. The, uh, on the bottom left is the, one of the early Paralympic Games. And, uh, and on the bottom right is the, the Paralympic Games in 2016, the opening ceremonies pictures. Um, I, uh, in part speaking to you today because I, I competed in the Paralympics and, all, and I compete in para sport even to this day and continue to hand cycle. And um, unfortunately in the Marine Corps Marathon in 2019, I had a, a severe accident that wound up uh, placing me in uh, intensive care and then through extensive rehabilitation. Um, and so, uh, it made me think about the importance of, of training uh, uh, physicians and residents and other individuals involved in, uh, in supporting and organizing sport about some of the features, the safety features. Unfortunately, I went on to, uh, to do the virtual Pittsburgh Marathon in 2020 and just, uh, the, yeah, just yesterday, actually the Sunday, May 2nd, um, did the uh, virtual Pittsburgh Marathon with uh, a group of other hand cyclists in Pittsburgh. So I have uh, uh, pretty much fully recovered and, and probably that was likely due to being, um, staying fit uh, as well during my, um, uh, my entire post-injury career. I'm very grateful to Dr. Pasquina and Sergeant Major Green who were instrumental in, in my care and intensive care, of course, to my wife as well and David Gifford, who was uh, also a retired Army Sergeant, and he uh, was also helpful in training me to get ready for the marathon again. Let me, I told let me show you a little video about HURL, the Human Engineering Research Laboratories, and then we'll talk about some features specifically related to uh, sport. I tell people frequently, and I really mean this, is kind of like Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory. I get to play with robots and all these technologies. Our mission is to apply engineering and advanced technology to improve the mobility and function of individuals with disabilities. A large number of them are our veteran population. Hey. Every day that you come in, there's this kind of wonderful energy here. From students to staff to faculty, we wouldn't really be living up to our, our mission if we didn't include people with disabilities in all aspects of what we do. Our vision is a world where everyone with a disability can participate on a level playing field to their greatest extent possible. I've got a disability, you know. I certainly wouldn't think of myself as disabled, but it was having a huge impact on my life, on my wife and my children. We can do better than that. We, we have to do better than that. So I work here because I want to give everyone an equal opportunity to whatever they want. Disability shouldn't be the thing that prevents them from getting those things. So um, one of the things important is that sport is actually turns up an important characteristic of helping veterans uh, 
return to um, community reintegration and health and uh, in both the, the promoting successful integration and warrior transition leader, the medical reinflation handbook, uh, when we interviewed um, veterans, one of the, some of the key factors to the successful recovery and reintegration, it was their participant in adapt, re, adaptive reconditioning and adaptive sports. So we know a few things. I uh, hope you enjoy the pictures on the right. Uh, there's that's goal ball, um, off road, downhill, uh, mountain biking or mountain cycling, and also rock climbing. But um, we do know several things about life with a physical impairment, and uh, these are all features that one should be cognizant of when. Uh, for uh, encouraging people to participate in adaptive sports and reconditioning, as well in, when organizing events and overseeing events. And then um, this uh, on the right, you can see uh, so a couple of pictures from wheelchair basketball. And one of the things I'd like to point out, it is important if, from my personal experience as well, um, not to be overly risk averse and to allow people to try different activities and to improve their performance. And, you know, the military and the VA, we work hard to try to get people back to their maximum level of, of performance. In some cases, maybe even exceeding what it was before they had a sustained a, a, an injury or an illness. Um, I do say, what do we know from research to put a question mark on the end? because I've been in this business long enough to know that some of the things that we thought were true uh, proved not to be true as there was more science, uh, became, as more science became available. Um, and as uh, individuals with disabilities attempted things that were thought previously not to be a, a possible, such as Bobby Hall uh, completing the first wheelchair marathon in 1976, to um, George Murray breaking the four, four minute mile in 1988, to um, uh, uh, athletes like uh, Tatiana McFadden um, winning uh, multiple gold medals and going under 13 minutes in the 5,000 meter. And um, now athletes have you know, broken the um, Oh, the one hour and 20 minute barrier for wheelchair marathon and are almost uh, have almost broken the one hour barrier for the hand cycle marathon. So, um, but things change. So uh, one of the big problems is that we um, need to make technology more accessible and we're fortunate that the VA does provide technology and there are organizations like the Challenge the Athletes Fund that provide uh, grants and scholarships to purchase equipment as well. Um, we do know that sports for, does promote a more positive self-image by people themselves, their own people, and also by others. Um, so, uh, you know, it's, it's easier to gain self-respect and respect of others. For example, if you participate in active, common act, act, activities that people enjoy and that you um, and then in any cases, also in cases when you do well. You know, so people respect, for example, when you can do a marathon and, uh, and even more so if you can perform better than they can in a marathon despite your uh, disabilities or impairments. Um, the barriers are the same ones that uh, pretty much anybody would uh, face. It's, it's a large extent. Um, you know, availability programs, equipment, transportation, accessibility of service of the programming. And, um, and of course, there can be functional limitations. And it was, you know, it's pretty, pretty much hopefully common knowledge that uh, one should consult a, a physician prior to beginning to exercise or making a significant change in exercise. And um, we do know that, uh, um, you know, the exercise is a pretty reasonably good form of treatment for uh, depression and, and some other conditions. Um, 
if you saw in the, you see in the pictures here, so there's just some of the other examples of individual. This you can see this an individual who's got limb loss or a limb amputation and uh, is scuba diving. Uh, that's actually me um, swimming and doing the butterfly. And um, and down in the lower picture uh, is a great illustration of how even individuals with very high levels of impairment and severe disabilities uh, could participate in sport. And in this case, in, in power wheelchair soccer. In the article you can see talks about the psychological impact at the National Veterans Wheelchair Games and Winter Sports Clinic. Um, we have to be uh, careful about injury during parasport and uh, Nick Webber, Webern and others have done a lot of research in this area specifically related to Paralympic medicine and they, they do, uh, they can maintain a registry. Uh, there could be uh, acute and chronic injuries. Uh, this is an x-ray uh, taken from a participant at the uh, Warrior Games. And it's pretty clear that there's a femoral fracture and this individual really was coming in to seek really more pain medication in order to continue to participate in, in, in sports activities. Obviously, um, due to the, the edema and the bruising and then uh, so, the visible fracture after an x-ray, uh, he, he had to suspend participating in sport until he was healed. Fortunately, there are several chronic injuries that we have to be careful for with rotator cuff injuries, carpal tunnel syndrome, epicondylitis, all of these, especially among wheelchair users, but also among crutch users. The most common types of, abra uh, of injuries are contusions, abrasions, and fractures, which might not be too surprising. They kind of happen in sports in general. Um, for individuals with uh, compromised neurological systems, we do see cases of autonomic dysreflexia, which is not something that uh, most people are common to seeing. And that can um, occur uh, due to um, distress. Some athletes do this on purpose, especially with, uh, with tetraplegia uh, and um, by inflicting either pain or, 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 or restricting urine flow. And uh, of course, it can be extremely dangerous and lead to strokes and even death. And then um, we have to be careful about uh, uh, in some athletes' uh, temperature regulation. So you can get both heat exhaustion or hypothermia. And then uh, concussion has become uh, something that uh, of um, uh, more uh, being studied more recently and also uh, of concern. And so, uh, greater use of helmets, uh, but also uh, concussion protocols, especially in, in sports where there's the potential of, of impact like in uh, rugby, wheelchair rugby, or, or, um, or falls like in uh, wheelchair basketball. Well, I should point out that heterotopic ossification is, is uh, not, not common, but does occur with some regularity especially among our athletes who have uh, lost limb due to blast injuries. There's some theory that the uh, micro particles from the blast uh, may cause um, heterotopic ossification of the muscle. Uh, you can see from the image uh, in the slide here that it's, you know, it obviously can be pretty, very painful to wear a socket in that case. So there has to be a lot of precautions taken. There's some uh, techni <clears throat> important technological advances. Uh, 3D printing uh, has uh, demonstrated to be effective in some cases and is um, growing um, in usage. So actually up the upper left there, you'll see a, a 3D printed backrest mount. The nice thing about that is allows um, files to be stored so parts could be replaced easily. There, reasonably low cost actually for the small for small numbers of units and you can get a high degree of customization so on the upper right you can see there's a, um, a, a racing wheelchair glove that's been 3d printed 
with uh, what's called selective laser sintering technology, and then basically coated with the uh, rubber for or greater contact. And um, that uh, is uh, uh, very popular uh, now among wheelchair racers. And then on the bottom picture, that is a 3D printed prosthetic uh, for sports foot or the keel for a sports foot. And um, that allows the, fo the foot to be tuned to an individual athlete and maybe even an individual sport and event. Um, so design has become, uh, wheelchair sports and adaptive sports have kind of been the lead and the uh, concept is design is an extension of the athlete. <coughs> um, so here's uh, three examples. The, um, uh, the, um, uh, the uh, racing wheelchair built by BMW uh, design works that uh, Tatiana McFadden and others used in the 2016 Paralympic Games. That was designed to be stiff and aerodynamic. Uh, unfortunately, it turn, didn't turn out to be as light a weight as they had desired. And um, the, uh, um, the, but it did, uh, um, it was used successfully to win medals. And then below there's the uh, uh, hand cycle custom made out of carbon fiber uh, used by the world champion and the in Olympic champion in 2012 and 2016. And then on the lower right is, uh, is a hand cycle for individuals with paraplegia uh, and um, also made of carbon fiber. And it's an 18 pound complete hand cycle, which is uh, very effective and very lightweight, uh, you know, competitive with the Ava Mini top end bicycles. At the Human Engineering Research Laboratories, Cooper and his team of graduate students are demonstrating how engineering can help athletes in such diverse sports as wheelchair rugby, basketball, and racing. So you have one set of goals in wheelchair racing, you have an entirely different set of goals in uh, wheelchair rugby, and there's no one chair that's going to be best for wheelchair racing versus wheelchair rugby. Sometimes referred to as murder ball, wheelchair rugby players need strength and stability as they blast down the court, crashing into each other in hopes of crossing the goal line. When people see our sport, I think it's, it comes as a great shock. I don't think they expect to see people charging around in wheelchairs, smashing each other out. To withstand multiple impacts, rugby wheelchairs have bumpers and durable aluminum frames that go through rigorous testing at the lab. But rugby being a full contact sport, sure have to be able to withstand those loads. Otherwise, the frames will crack. Another thing rugby wheelchairs are designed to do is stay upright. Engineers add small wheels on either side of the axle to provide front and back stability. If you have wheels behind you and wheels in front of you, then you can lean forward and you lean back. You'll have more weight on the rear wheels, but you won't tip over. Close attention is paid to the wheelchair's center of gravity, the point at which both the chair and the athlete's mass is equally distributed in all directions. The points where a wheelchair can tip over sideways are called the fulcrums, represented by the two triangles. A wheelchair with a higher seat is easier to tip when struck because it is easier for the center of gravity to pass over the fulcrum. In a rugby wheelchair, the seat is placed lower to the ground and the wheels are angled outward. The chair has to rotate more before the center of gravity crosses from one side of the fulcrum to the other, making it harder for the chair to tip over. Wheelchair basketball is played on the same court, but it is more of a finesse game that relies on quickness and skill. These wheelchairs are optimized for a player's position. You really have to kind of classify them in two groups. There's the basketball wheelchairs for forwards and centers and basketball wheelchairs for guards. Forwards and centers are usually under the net, ready to rebound and score, so their wheelchairs are optimized for height. We make a trade-off in speed by sitting up higher in order to get rebounds and to get closer to the basket for shots. Guards are ball handlers. Their wheelchairs have a lower seat, providing better mobility and quickness because the athlete is able to push with more force on the wheels. A strong guard can almost go the entire court in two pushes. 
In a typical Paralympic race, athletes fly down the track at speeds approaching 20 miles per hour or 32 kilometers per hour. That is within two seconds of 400 meter world record holder Michael Johnson. It's all really about speed and how fast can you go. The ideal racing wheelchair has three wheels, two in the back and one in the front to allow the athlete to sit more aerodynamically. It is made from composite materials like carbon fiber, which allow the chair to be lightweight and stiff without compromising stability. During the race, athletes sit low and forward, generating maximum speed by applying as much force as possible to the entire hand rim. You don't grab the rim in racing, you, you punch the hand rim and you actually try to get all the way down to the bottom. From the track to the court to the street with the everyday wheelchair, Cooper and his team are giving people with disabilities the cutting edge equipment they need. Seeing how we can help improve their function and improve their quality of life, and that, that's a real reward for me. Um, so racing wheelchair, you saw a little bit there. This just shows some uh, of our papers on the side there, but you can see how close people draft together and the skills, the highly skills that are required. And up on the upper, you can see some sort of historical pictures from wheelchair racing as well. Um, we do need to expand Parasport into provide more opportunities for power wheelchair users. Uh, we wrote a review article on that. You can see it on the right hand side. You can uh, um, download it or view it from the web. Uh, this is uh, the two opportunities here power wheelchair soccer uh, up on the upper left. And also, uh, they recently held in 2019 the first world championships for uh, power wheelchair hockey, field hockey. And uh, there are a lot of uh, health benefits, psychological impact of sport. And there's some papers that are shown that. Um, pictures on the bottom, you see sled hockey, body surfing, and rugby again. Um, can promote post-traumatic growth, improve perception of self, improve quality of life, improve mobility skills, help with acceptance of disability. And um, can improve with goal setting and activation. Um, but Parasport also benefits uh, communities. We uh, participate in Parasport in the, uh, for example, the Pittsburgh Marathon and other marathons around the, the world. And uh, it helps to improve community understanding and relationships. It helps to increase belonging and uh, belongingness uh, autonomy and challenge, mastery and engagement and meaning for both people with and without disabilities. And um, they can also leave a lasting health legacy where, uh, where people uh, with and without disabilities become motivated to, um, to get healthy and to stay healthy. And these are uh, integrated activities are really critical so that uh, uh, you could see that anybody in the community with some hard work and training can participate. And uh, there are also physiological benefits, uh, cardiovascular conditioning, musculoskeletal strengthening, respiratory uh, conditioning, and, and then for people with disabilities, there's reduced risk of metabolic diseases such as diabetes. And, uh, and it just can be fun. So you can promote a healthy lifestyle through Parasport uh, with using uh, various apps, uh, using accessible facilities and facilitating access to equipment and, and organizing group activities. Um, there are some risks. So we wanna mitigate repetitive strain injuries by teaching proper wheelchair propulsion, which is such as the semicircular pattern. If you look at the pattern of the hand on the push rim, uh, you can use such tools as the, uh, the smart wheel to uh, measure stroke frequency and reduce force uh, and how to reduce forces. We can use ultrasound uh, techniques for the uh, looking at the biceps tendon, as well as uh, looking at uh, prevention or mitigation of carpal tunnel syndrome. 
Uh, we could look at also uh, transfer techniques and look changing equipment. And one important thing is also maintaining a healthy body weight. So it puts less strain on the upper extremities and less risk for cardiovascular as well as metabolic diseases. Um, there also, if fitting is extremely important, so to risk the um, injuries of pressure injuries. As the, on the upper left, there's a illustration of an individual who got the um, this pressure ulcer, uh, where that you can see the arrows indicate in the, on the lower back uh, after a after after one rugby tournament because the uh, because of an ill-fitting chair, and that can be done by you know scanning the back and doing a better job of fitting people. Um, cushions are also important on the if you look in sort of the on the, on the right hand side, those two images, there's uh, that's a sled hockey seat and the red issues show the high pressure under the ischial tuberosities. And uh, we can by proper cushioning, in this case using just a kayak cushion, uh, we could uh, spread the load out and remove any red spots by splitting the load up a larger portion of the tissue. Um, then we also look at uh, have to look at environmental health uh, preparation as well. Uh, so here you can see, uh, this is a marathon again, where our team was helping to support and, uh, and it was raining. And so their risk of individuals that don't have good body temperature regulation of, of getting uh, uh, injuries. So, you know, to minimize prolonged exposure to heat, cold, rain, and snow, uh, which I've seen all of those. And, um, it's especially important to have a specialized medical team familiar with para-athletes. One way to do that is a pair with, you know, team up with your um, physical medicine or rehab doctors and, and specialists. Have cooling and warming tents and vests. Um, have a surveillance system in place. For example, the Pittsburgh Marathon, we have physicians and residents and uh, emergency medica medicine students uh, travel uh, at, on four teams along the course and they cover all of the course throughout the whole period and, and track all of the athletes with cyclists. Um, and have uh, fluids, cool and warm available, uh, whether you need to cool somebody down or heat them back up again and rehydrate them. So we use the para-athlete assistance team or, um, at, in Pittsburgh, they have staff credentials and uh, they, um, we provide uh, mechanical assistance. So we have mechanics on course to do like flat tires or a jump chain. They're in radio communication. They could pull people off the course and put them in a vehicle uh, when and as needed. And um, they, uh, uh, we get vehicle passes. We use four of them in our marathon. We seed athletes, which also promotes safety. safety. So we have, uh, we line them up and then we also do them in corrals. So we let the fastest athletes get out first. So they're not having to negotiate uh, slower athletes. And um, it also kind of encourages people to ride at a, at a pace that's uh, safer for them and safer for the other participants. Um, we also provide pre-marathon education for first time participants. So uh, training, how to train, uh, technical skills like drafting and how to take corners and follow the, the tangents, uh, safety, you know, not going too fast on downhill sections that we even control in some cases, the speed on certain sections. We have uh, go over the race rules, we'll do race packet pickup for them and we host a pre-race marathon pasta dinner specifically for our athletes that, you, that require adaptations. And then, um, we uh, use uh, GPS and RFID trackers, so we know where everyone is, and we know when runners and para-athletes might overlap in some cases where, even though we start the para-athletes first, the runners may might catch up with them, and so we, we uh, follow that as well. Um, we use uh, four teams, and um, the uh, they have a, each has a team leader, assistant team leader, a driver, a mechanic, uh, medical personnel and an assistant mechanic. Um, 
Um, and then we have a specialized uh, medical team that uh, um, includes, uh, that's integrated with the overall medical support and coordinated with them. I have knowledge of para-athlete medicine. Most of them are physical medicine and rehab physicians. Their um, response is that they start and they finish. But uh, as, I, as I said, we have uh, physicians on our four traveling teams around the course that know where all of our athletes are at all times. So all of our para-athletes are. And then we provide uh, cycle escorts. So the cycle escorts, uh, each one, each athlete is assigned a cycle escort. They help make sure that uh, the safety of the athletes are para-athletes as well as spectators. So nobody walks across the mis, you know, misunderstands the speed that people could be traveling and gets hit while trying to cross the street or um, that a para-athlete, uh, you know, doesn't see a pothole because visibility is reduced or a speed bump or, and also knows where to go on the course. And if something happens, there's immediate assistance available and they can coordinate with the medical or the mechanical assistance folks. And then um, they all, as it's every one of our athletes gets an assistant pass so they can um, bring a, a friend or family member with them into the start finish area to help manage their wheelchair or their prosthetic limb or bring uh, clothing, um, assist with ingress and egress to positioning and to start because hand cycles kind of tear like semi trucks and um, help you know get people safely back to their vehicles. We provide specialized parking. And uh, in the end, we make sure that all are present and accounted for uh, at the finish line and record all the finish times and finish order. Yes, I can suddenly, yes, I can. Gee, I'm afraid to go on has turned into, yes, I can. Take a look, what do you see? 133 pounds of confidence, me. Got the feeling I can do anything, yes, I can. Something that sings in my blood is telling me, yes, I can. I was just born today, I can go all the way, yes, I can. 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 Hey, yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. Are you ready? I can climb Everest. Yes, I can. I can fight here all night and never rest. Yes, I can. I was just born today. I can go all the way. Yes,
So I hope you enjoyed that. That uh, was the uh, video from the Paralympics in 2016. And uh, that's literally how it started, uh, jumping through the Olympic rings. This is my contact information. Also, very um, pleased to share with you that I was uh, in 2019 given a pat U.S. Patent Office a trading collectible card, a, a one of only uh, 28 Americans to be so honored and uh, some of the other ones you might recognize, such as Thomas Edison, Nicholas Tesla, Temple Grandin, Abraham Lincoln, Steve Wozniak, and others. So thank you very much, and I hope you go out there and help uh, para-athletes uh, achieve their goals and be safe in the process.